what we're going to talk about in this video is a phenomenon called diffraction. And it's a phenomenon that is only exhibited by waves. And famously, this was in fact how in the 1800s, a guy named Thomas Young proved that light was indeed a wave. And apparently, at least at the time, settled the dispute between Newton's model of corpuscles, these particles that made up light, and Huygens' picture of light as a wave. He showed, using diffraction, that light, in fact, was a wave. So what is diffraction? Well, before we discuss diffraction in light, we're going to show it in a wave that's a lot easier to see and understand, and that is a water wave. And so what we've got here is a device that's called a ripple tank. What it has is a small amount of water sitting in a dish on top of the tank, and underneath this there's a bright light source that shines through the water, reflects off this mirror, and projects an image of the waves on the screen. Now, unfortunately, water waves typically travel quite rapidly, so to slow them down, or at least to appear to slow them down, what we have is essentially a, a, a strobing uh, device, or a device that covers the light and then uncovers it, and we can adjust its speed with the knob here. And so by doing that, what we can do is we can effectively slow down the waves. So of course, what's actually happening is you're seeing successive waves. You're not seeing uh, you know, the same wave moving slowly. You're seeing successive waves that are just slightly more displaced uh, than the previous wave you saw. So the effect is as if the waves have been slowed down. And to generate the waves, what we have is a small electric motor here that has uh, got an arm that sticks into the water, and there is a flat plate that bounces up and down to generate the waves. And what we're going to do to demonstrate uh, a diffraction is we're going to put a small gate like this. So this is just a piece of metal with a slot cut out of it. So the waves will impact on one side, and they will only the waves that are in this slot will be allowed to pass through, and we'll see what happens to the wave front. So let's have a look at what happens when we put a uh, block with a single slit inside uh, in the middle of it. Okay, so here we have the ripple tank showing the uh, closest we can get to plane waves. They're not obviously perfectly plane, but they're, they're relatively straight. And so what I'm going to do to show diffraction is to put an object in here, which blocks the waves. And when I do that, you can see that the waves come around the object, but they don't go in a straight line after passing the object. They curve around and fill in the gap behind the object. And this is actually what Thomas Young did with light. He used a, a thin razor, very sharp razor edge, and he showed that in the shadow you could see bright fringes that came from light waves diffracting around the, in this case it was, in his case it was a, la uh, a razor, it would diffract around the edge of the razor and produce fringes here. In this case, we've got a circular object, and so we have diffraction happening on both sides. And so what you see down here is that the waves come together, and the object is essentially uh, hidden largely. By the time you get a, a long distance away, you have a continuous uh, a wave front here, which doesn't show any signs of a break from the object. So that's what happens when we have an object blocking waves, and we see diffraction going around the edges. Now let's have a look and see what happens when we put a slit in there. So here we have now a block with a single slit in the middle, and you can see that the waves don't just carry on in a straight line from the uh, slit, but they spread out to either side, and this is what is called diffraction. Now, if you look very carefully here, it's a bit hard to see with these water waves, but you can see that we have a main beam going straight on here, and you can see that at this angle here, there is maybe a slight reduction in amplitude, and again here, you get another reduction in amplitude, but you can see that there's waves diffracting through even larger angles. And so what we're getting here from this single slit is in fact a pattern of large and small amplitude um, as we scan through the angles from straight ahead, as we go round to the side here or round to the side here, we get minimum and maximum uh, amplitude. And so again, since light is a wave, this is what we'd expect to see with light. 
but before we end our discussion with waterways, let's first have a look at one last situation, and that is if we replace this single slit here with two narrow slits. So here we now have a block with two slits in it, here and here, and you can see that the waves are diffracting. They're not producing pencil beams, they're producing semicircular wave fronts from I each one of these two slits. But the difference here is because we've got two of them, these two wave fronts interfere. And so if we look further from the slits here, you can see that we have a large amplitude of water wave. But then just here, we have no amplitude at all before we get another large amplitude, another decrease in amplitude, and so on. So here, we're getting an oscillating pattern between large amplitude, zero amplitude, large amplitude again. And this is the diffraction pattern that we get from two slits. So now we've seen how water waves will diffract around an object that's placed in their way or through a narrow slit where they spread out and form a semicircular wavefront on the other side. Now to demonstrate the same with light we have to use different apparatus and the reason for that is that light is a far shorter wavelength so we need far narrower slits in order to show the same sort of diffraction and we also need a coherent source of light waves. So we can't just use an incandescent bulb or a compact fluorescent or even an LED bulb since these generate what we call incoherent waves where the phase of the wave source is changing randomly with time. And so for light, we need a wave source that has a constant phase that you know, varies just with the frequency and doesn't have other random factors that, that offset it. And so when we're demonstrating diffraction with light, we're going to be using a laser such as this one. So that's it for our introduction to diffraction. In the next video, we'll have a look at diffraction of light and we'll actually calculate the patterns that we expect to see. Thank you.